OK. Uh, so uh, first, let's uh, chat about uh, ORM, or uh, object uh, relational mapping. Uh, meaning that uh, we have a, an object, uh, presumably in, um, in a CPU, in, in RAM. Uh, so here's your uh, computer, and, and looking at the desktop, and um, and then you have multiple objects running uh, in some RAM. So this is RAM. Okay. Uh, and the nature uh, of this of this data is that it's ephemeral, right? It comes and goes. In, uh, from one t from, from one instance to the next, right? It's not persistent. It, it's not meant for any long-term persistence. Uh, it, the, 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 the storage footprint is very small. Uh, the lifespan is very short, right? Uh, and we would like to be able to automatically map this uh, to some, uh, some tables, perhaps uh, some records, uh, where the, uh, the, 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 uh, the lifespan is very long, right? It's, it's stored. Uh, persistently, perhaps uh, for uh, for many, many years, uh, decades, or whatnot. Yes. Uh, so the lifespan of each one of these records uh, might be uh, very long, uh, have a long, very longevity, right? Also, the, the the size of the storage of this is is humongous. It's is huge, right? Compared to compared to this. Uh, so so oftentimes the uh, the design decisions that are made uh, here at the uh, at the CPU level at the software. Uh, where you have these uh, these uh, ephemeral objects, uh, as opposed to this is a very long term. It's uh, you're trying to solve completely two different uh, problems. Right? It's, it's it's very very uh, d different different use cases. Um, uh, but nevertheless, we would like to be able to, to map them. Uh, uh, presumably, what we'd like to be able to do is that um, uh, that uh, for every one of these, right, uh, we would like to have perhaps a representation. Right. So if this is a record whose primary key is one two three. Presumably, this would be also have uh, some identity, the same the same identity, and anything that I I do to that to that object, uh, I'm also doing to that record. Okay, uh, but but uh, uh, um, obviously this is not possible. We cannot represent uh, every single entity here in the database into a CPU. Right? It's just that it's not, you know here you have you might have multiple terabytes uh, of, of data, whereas here you can only ever hope to have a small snippet. Right, a small um, subset of whatever uh, you have, uh, what you have here. Yes, uh, but nevertheless, we would like to uh, automatically uh, map these things. Right, that uh, uh, that would give you these the the um, uh, uh, the semblance, right, uh, of uh, having these object instances being able to manipulate any particular record over here. Okay, uh, and we have we have been building these the, these DAOs with that sort of kind of do, do this, right? Uh, the DAOs allow us to uh, do a read uh, uh, for, for records that, um, that, that uh, match a particular criteria, come into memory. Uh, we we uh, manipulate them in, uh, in, uh, in memory, in RAM, and then we write them back to, to, to a database, right? After we manipulate them or, or use them. Uh, and and uh, uh, so, so uh, we've written quite a few of these, right? Uh, we typically uh, follow a pattern where we, for every type of entity, right, so if this is entity A and this is entity B, and you have multiple entities, uh, you might have uh, uh, an equal amount of entities, right, maybe uh, A DAO, B, and C. Uh, so you'll have multiple D DAOs, one per, uh, per type, okay? Uh, and each one uh, also uh, has a, a well-known set of operations. You have the, the, the creates, the reads. Uh, the updates and the deletes for each one of them, right? So you're able to create C's, create B's, create A's, and whatnot. Okay, uh, and uh, so so what we'd like to be able to do is, is generalize the, the, this this idea uh, that um, uh, uh, so can, can we can we uh, uh, generalize it, parameterize it, uh, package it, and uh, and make it reusable so that uh, if tomorrow we want to write a brand new XDAO, we don't have to build one from scratch. Okay. Uh, and that it gives us the uh, the uh, um, the automatic mechanism that uh, whatever objects I retrieve from this D from this uh, magical DAO uh, gives us instances of objects that whatever I do to these objects somehow they are uh, uh, automatically uh, updated in the in the database. Right? Uh, that the, that they're mapped. Right? That the object that I get 
is somehow related to some record in the database, and whatever what happens to one happens to the other. Okay. Uh, so so this uh, so this notion uh, um, of wanting to create these uh, these this uh, mapping between between objects, uh, this this automatic uh, pers um, uh, creation of this generic uh, DALs is what. Uh, comes to be known as the object relational mapping uh, idea, right? So it's a pattern uh, that uh, that folks uh, invented a while back. It says, well, you know, I've written so many DAOs, I can generalize this, right? You just give me what do you need? What, what's different between between these, right? I mean, they all have CRUD operations, right? Uh, they 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 all. They, it looks like we have one per uh, entity, right? Um, uh, these these operators, they all look the same. Right, they create it's an insert. Uh, it's an insert uh, into blank, right? Um, uh, and then the the um, uh, values, right? Uh, where where you have um, sorry, the uh, you have the the set of fields, uh, and then values, and then the set of the set of uh, values, right? Uh, and so so it looks like it's a it's a template, right? If I if I could just parameterize this. Uh, if you just give me, you know, I'll write one for, for A, I'll write one for B, I'll write one for C. Uh, uh, if I go across multiple, um, each one of these, the only difference is that, well, these will change, right? The, uh, the, the field names will change. The value data types will also change, all based off of what? The fields in A. And then I'll have to write one a different one for B. And then I'll have to write one a different one for C, right? Well, what, how can I generalize that? Well, I, I, I could parameterize this so that if you if you give me the schema, if you give me the class, the XDAO class, right? Uh, I just need to know the name of the class, right? I need to know the fields. I'll just iterate over them and, and uh, generate the names of the fields, uh, and and then I can leave this as placeholders, right? That uh, you'll just give me those, those values at runtime, and and then I'll just fill them in to 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 so I'll create a prepared statement out of this. Uh, ready to ready to, uh, to to insert, and then I'll package it uh, and give you an, a, a generic API uh, for 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 A, B, and C. Typically, these are, these were called something like uh, you know create you know create A, create B, create C. Right? Maybe I'll just create I'll, I'll generate I'll package this in a generic you know create in a generic create. I don't know what it's called. Right, so I'll just call it create, and perhaps the A, B, or C could be an argument. So you pass me A, pass me B, pass me C, right? And that is an argument to this create, right? And then, and then I can take that that uh, argument, and I can I can find out, you know, what the what the schema is, what the data model is, and and generate this on the fly, right? And that's I'll, I'll never have to create a, a write a, an insert ever again, right? To uh, to, to 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 write my own create DAO. Right, same thing for the uh, uh, for the updates, right? Same thing for the deletes. Same thing for the for the finders, right? Uh, typically, the finders uh, will be the, the most common ones, right? Uh, typically, they'll be a find by ID. Right? They all the, the, we all have a find by ID. There'll be probably a find all, right? So so again, there might be you know find uh, there'll be a find all A's, right? Or find all B's. Well, I don't have A's. I don't have B's. If, if I want to write a generic one, I'll just call it find all, right? Or um, or, or find there would be find A by ID. So well, since, since I don't know which uh, what since I want to create a generic one, I'll create one a find by ID, right? And A can be passed as an argument, perhaps. Yes. Uh, so so that's what um, uh, object relational mapping uh, APIs are, are targeting, right? Is the is the generalization of the idea of the data access object uh, as a packaged uh, uh, generic uh, solution uh, that um, that you can just give it a, um, a data type, a class. Uh, you can annotate it just with a couple of things here and there, uh, and then magically it creates uh, all this for you. Right? That's that's one of the uh, the notions. The other notion about binding these these records uh, with these objects is that. Is that these, these DAOs? Uh, when you when you do uh, call one of these functions and say, "Well, find uh, by ID," say, well, you would expect and you provide a unique identifier. You would expect that this gives you 
uh, the, the data type that you were expecting, right? If you were looking for A's, then it would give you an A, uh, or give you a B, or give you a C. Obviously, it will probably give you something that is generic that you might perhaps need to cast back to the original data type, okay? Because this might come back as a generic object, right? Uh, and then you cast it back to the original data type, that you, which presumably you know what it is. Um, but even here, okay, uh, even though this, this uh, might, you might be able to assign this to some A, right, and, uh, and then use uh, A's accessors, right, and there might be an A dot get this, that, or the other, right, you'll have all the setters and getters uh, for each one of those, right. Um, and what, uh, what uh, the um, object, um, uh, with the object relational mappings, what they do is that they let you treat this object as if it were the, the, uh, the actual object, right? It'll have all the setters, all the getters, it'll have all the signatures that your class uh, uh, had, the one you provided, the actual A. But instead what it does is that it, uh, it creates a, um, what it's called a managed version of your class. Right, uh, so that so that, yeah, that so that um, you don't actually get your original original class. Or, um, it looks like it. It has exactly the same signature, uh, but right if you had a um, if you had a a user say uh, this this was this was user you uh, you know find da, 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 right and you had say um, you know dot get uh, first name. Okay, or had a uh, set first name, right? Uh, what uh, the uh, managed object uh, does is that it provides the same exact signature as yours, so you don't see any difference from what what your original version uh, had. Uh, but it uh, it creates its own version that uh, that what it does is that it eventually calls your set first name, right? But it, it adds additional uh, code here uh, to be able to identify the fact that you touched that, you modified it, right? It, and it needs to keep track of the fact that it's a dirty object, right? It has been, it has been mutated, right? Because it knows that this object is not just any object; it's an object that is tied to something that needs to be persisted in the back end, in the database, right? So that, so that uh, if you modified, you know, out of this object. You know, out of the you know twenty fields, you touch two of them. Okay, it needs to keep track of that because if you ever ask it to save it back to the database, right, it needs to know that you touch two of them but not the others. Right? So that when you ask it to update and it matches this particular record, uh, it needs to know that out of the twenty fields, two of them were modified but not the others. Right, because it needs to know. It says, "Okay, well, I'll update only those two fields. All the other ones I don't touch." Right, so it needs to keep track of the life cycle of uh, of these objects. So it's a managed life cycle object. Okay, so it keeps track of what's happening. So, uh, so that so so ORMs uh, uh, generalize all this behavior, right, of 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 maintaining of keeping track of the life cycle of these objects, so that so that oftentimes you need to make sure. You know, when you retrieve something from a database, is this an object that I actually retrieved from a database? So that you, you, you so you're, that you're, you're, you're certain that this is a managed object. It is bound to some record in the database, right? That it is that if you do change something in the local version of your object instance, that indeed as, is, is, is mapped to some field in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, in a database, right? Oftentimes, uh, some of the, uh, uh, some of the confusion of you know, I'm modifying this object, but I don't see any of those changes happening in the database, right? And when you start reading through the code, you say, "Well, look, it's not a managed object; it's just a local instance. It's just a regular object. It's not an object that you got from the database, right? Uh, it's not it, your database doesn't even know that that object even exists, right? So, so, so yeah. So, um, make sure that um, when, when indeed yeah, uh, you are manipulating these objects." That you make sure that, that you realize whether it's an object that you got from a database, or it's if it's just a local copy, right? That the database doesn't even know about it, right? That the ORM knows about, right? Um, uh, okay, so that, that's one that's uh, one notion. The other uh, um, now, if 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 these classes are simple classes, 
uh, where you have maybe just primitive data types, you know, integers, strings, and, and whatnot. Uh, then the then the mapping between the the your Java or your object oriented uh, fields mapped to um, you know SQL or relational database fields is trivial, right? Uh, you know some of the data types might not match exactly. Uh, you know SQL has quite a different versions of dates. You know and depending on how accurate you want to be, right? If you just want dates or you also want the you know hours, minutes, and seconds or timestamp. It has different ways of representing time and dates. Yes. Uh, whereas Java usually just has just date. That's it. Okay. Um, uh, but but if, uh, uh, so so the, da the, da the data types mapping exactly between the uh, the object world and the relational world uh, sometimes is not is is not uh, uh, is non trivial. Okay. And most of the times it is. Right. So the, the, the data types an integer is an integer. A floating point value is a floating point value. A string is a var char. Uh, so most of the time, the primitive data types there's no there's no uh, there's no inconsistency. Uh, what what uh, what starts to become uh, somewhat um, uh, uh, different or or challenging is uh, is when you start considering relationships. Right. When when uh, in in Java you might have a, a uh, you, you might have uh, uh, one of the properties not be a primitive data type, but a reference to some other object, okay, uh, or even a collection of other objects, right? So now, uh, now you, uh, the the mapping is not trivial. For instance, one of the, one of the one of the bigger challenges is, for instance, in in, in Java, uh, you might um, uh, you might have uh, a class. Uh, a that uh, might contain, you know, maybe a string, uh, maybe an integer. Uh, so A, B, and but then you might have another class over here, B, uh, that, uh, that that then you are referencing from A, right? So you might say that this is uh, uh, B. Well, I should have said B <laughs> here, B, B. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's not that's not exactly trivial to 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 map uh, to. Um, uh, to, to SQL. So how would you map that, right? So if B has a, uh, uh, so uh, int x uh, and uh, uh, string uh, y, right? And so the mapping might be that uh, you have a uh, you have a table A. Uh, so you have a table A, uh, and that uh, you have these fields. Uh, a might be a varchar, uh, and so what's this? What's this? A has a reference to B. Right, so if you have B over here, uh, how would you represent that in a um, uh, in a relational database? Well, the, the relationship might be that this looks like a foreign key, right? Where I have a reference back to some record of B, uh, where B might have X and Y. Yes, uh, and uh, and that um, uh, uh, so this is a, this is what this is a, a foreign key to B, right? So where where B might have a primary key. And uh, and B has a a reference to B, so you might have here B and that is a foreign key, right? That goes to that that references ID. So this typically also will have an ID, X and Y. Okay. Um, uh, now now notice that uh, uh, here uh, uh, typically you would have what if if A has a reference to B, typically you might have also that B might have what a a list of uh, of A's maybe. So this is might be A's, you know, multiple, you know, several instances of, of A's, right? Um, so how would you, how would you represent that, where B has many references uh, of A's, right? Uh, if you come here and try to represent that, there's there's, there's, you know, there's there's no there's nothing to put here in the relational database, right? Notice that the fact that that A already has a foreign key back to B already captures the fact, right, that for every uh, for every B, there might be many A's. You see that, right? The the fact that you have this foreign key already captures the fact that uh, that you have you could have many many records of A uh, that that have a foreign key back to B. You see that, right? There is there is no array here that you could that you, that you could capture, okay? Um, uh, and uh, and actually in 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 Java, you might even decide to do the following where. A does not even have a reference to, to uh, you know, A doesn't even have a reference to B, 
right? And, but because, because B has a list of A's, yes, uh, you'd still, the only way that you can represent that in, in a relational database is that you need a foreign key from A back to B, right, to capture the fact that B has many A's. You see that? Right? So notice that I, I just went through three different scenarios uh, for which it's exactly the same relational database, all right? Uh, where you have, you know, you're both referencing each other, one reference the other, or that one having many references back to over here, okay? Uh, so so, the, so the, um, the mapping between the, the object world and the relational world sometimes is not unique, right? And sometimes it's, uh, it's, um, uh, it's inconsistent or um, it's ambiguous, right? It's, uh, sometimes it's ambiguous. Uh, so, so to disambiguate, right, to disambiguate and, say, and, uh, and tell uh, the, the, uh, the mapping, the, the object re relational mapping mechanism, the one that goes from here to here or, or vice versa, uh, we, ha we have to be able to disambiguate and say exactly what we want. You know, do, do you want the foreign key? Do you, do you, do you, I mean, what do you want to do? Um, also notice that uh, this is not the only way of doing this, right? We have an alternative. We could do. We, could, we also could do this. We could have a mapping table in between, right? And the mapping table could have um, could have instead of this, right? We could have this. We could have a uh, um, something that points to A, uh, something that uh, 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 A and B, right? And says and says that these are both foreign keys, right? Where this references this and this references that. Right, and you can have uh, many records uh, entry here saying that hey, that B over here is related to all these A's over there. Right, so so again, yet another way that could represent this this same uh, object um, object uh, data model. Yes, all right. Again, uh, to, we need to be able to disambiguate, and, and that's what uh, object relational mapping mechanisms allow you to do. Uh, in our case, we're going to be using uh, JPA, and JPA allows you to uh, annotate and say what is it that you want to do. Do you want a mapping table in between? Uh, would you prefer just a foreign key? Okay, should any one of these reference each other? Should it reference only from one to the other, or the other to one? Right. So, so we need to be able to disambiguate. Uh, it's, and it gets even worse when you when you start adding other classes. C, right? Where and then you extend. You say that this extends C, okay? And uh, uh, so if this extends, so so now you're looking at, um, at at some at some cases where 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 you have a uh, uh, inheritance. Sorry, where this is a C, and B inherits. Uh, you know, B inherits from C. Uh, and as we saw earlier, we you know we spoke that uh, there are multiple ways of implementing inheritance, right? There's the single table. There's, there's the uh, you know there's the um, uh, the, the normalized uh, version. There's the denormalized version, right? And there's a couple more uh, versions out there, right? And uh, so we have to be able to now configure and, and and tell the mapping mechanism and say, well, which way do you want to do you want to implement it? Perhaps there might be a default way, right? The uh, the preferred way, perhaps it could be the uh, uh, the denormalized way, where you have just one table that encapsulates all the fields, perhaps that might be the default. Uh, uh, but then you, you should be able to, uh, to 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 configure it and say, well, no, I, pr I would prefer to normalize this, right, um, and whatnot. Okay. All right. Just this is just to say that uh, that that the um, uh, that there might be a disconnect, or uh, there, there's no unique way that to go one from one to the other. Uh, oftentimes, we, uh, we refer to this, uh, uh, this challenge uh, of mapping one world to the other world. We call it the impedance problem, right? That uh, there's, no, there's no easy way uh, to map uh, these, these, these two worlds. Uh, uh, here's, here's another one. Here's another one. Uh, if, you, if you load, say you, you have a DAO, right? You have a DAO uh, that looks for all the instances of B. Right? And as it loads all the instances of B, it loads the X, it loads the Ys, obviously, right? I load the values of X and Y. What do I do with the values of A? Do I also load the values of A? Meaning, do I do a join uh, where the uh, I find all the A's whose foreign key map to my ID, 
right? Do I load them also and instantiate the list and provide that? Do I do that, right? So that's a, that's a, that's a question, right? Uh, now over here in a, in a relational database, I can access the Bs without even worrying about A, right? I can just access B all by themselves. You know, I would have to deliberately join with A if I also want the values of A. But here, it's not clear. Okay, in the in the object world, it would be very common that I, I have instances of B that also include instances of A. It would be a very common thing to to do. But once you start once you start considering that this is not just any regular Java object, it's actually a Java object that is mapped to a database, meaning that that um, loading for A would incur multiple queries uh, to a database, additional queries to a database, could be very expensive, right? Then you start scratching your head, should I? Sh do I do I actually need the A's? Do I want to incur in that additional uh, uh, cost of, of having to go out and actually load all those A's in the database, right? Uh, so so you, start, you start considering performance, you start considering whether I even need it, Right, so, so you might start considering strategies. Perhaps I might have a lazy strategy that I don't necessarily load the A's until I absolutely need them. Okay, or I might inc in incur into an eager strategy. The eager strategy would be that if I load the B's, I would also, I'll obviously, also load the A's. Right? So you can also configure that kind of performance, that kind of behavior on how is it that the ORM is going to treat these relationships. Okay, make sense? All right, so that's a, a ORM in a, in a nutshell. Uh, we're going to be using, um, uh, in this class, we'll be using the JPA, uh, the Java Persistence API. And so the Java Persistence API is the, uh, it's, the uh, um, uh, it's, a, it's a library uh, that's now the standard uh, library in, uh, in Java. It, um, uh, it stems from uh, a lot of work that uh, some folks did uh, um, Early in this uh, century, uh, when uh, folks hated the uh, previous solution, the EJBs. I don't know if any anybody had the uh, unfortunate uh, um, have to work with EJBs, uh, but the community hated uh, the Java community. Really didn't like the uh, you know, Sun Microsystems solution uh, to this to this dilemma on how to map these two worlds, the relational database and the object world. And so a lot of folks went out to implement their own solutions, right? Uh, one in particular became very, very popular, Hibernate, uh, you know, had a really nice uh, uh, API that uh, be became very, very uh, um, popular with the, uh, with the Java community. Uh, and, uh, and eventually, you know, uh, the Java folks, uh, you, know, um, uh, um, you know, made it, made it made available to the community uh, what, uh, what, the, what the direction of the API should, look, should be, and, uh, and overwhelmingly, uh, a lot of the ideas that Hibernate uh, had had come up with uh, eventually became the standard, which is today. Right. Uh, so, so today now Hibernate is just one of many uh, vendors that uh, implements the JPA uh, uh, API. Uh, like like uh, all things Java, uh, the 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 Java folks they only provide an API, right? And then you have lots of vendors then implement that API. But that API was was uh, the current API. Uh, is heavily, heavily uh, uh, based on the on the Hibernate uh, API, right? Uh, way back when. So anyway, so we'll we'll, we'll uh, so you'll you'll see a lot of Hibernate, uh, you know, going back and forth as uh, as things are spewing out in the console, right? And, and so that's 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 why, right? We're, we're using a lot of their 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 stuff. All right. So yeah. So we'll be using the uh, JPA uh, uh, persistence.